गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज ट्रांस कनेक्ट आई एम डॉक्टर मोहित चौधरी एंड टूडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट रोल ऑफ प्लास्टिसाइज इन ब्लड बैंक दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक बोथ फॉर थ्योरी एंड प्रैक्टिकल फॉर डी एन बीज एंड वी नीड टू नो अबाउट इट दिस विल एसेंशली कवर द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द ब्लड बैंक ब्लड बैग्स द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द ब्लड बैग्स द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ द ब्लड बैग्स वॉट आर प्लास्टिसाइजर्स द टाइप्स ऑफ प्लास्टिसाइजर्स एंड द रोल ऑफ प्लास्टिसाइजर्स इन आर बी सीज प्लेटलेट्स एंड क्रायो बैग so this will be taken up by my colleague dr somya banu who is going to take you through this lecture so over to dr somya a very good morning everyone i will be discussing the topic role of plasticizers in blood banks under the following subheadings first about the history of blood bags properties of blood bags composition of blood bags what is plasticizers types of plasticizers role of plasticizers in rbc platelets and cryo bags as we all know before invention of plastic blood bags glass bottles were used for storing blood coming to history of blood bags in 1949 the american red cross society conducted prototype trials of plastic blood bags in 1950 carl walter and w p murphy introduced the plastic bags and tested clinically for blood collection in early 1960 plastic blood bags were licensed for use Walter who was the founder of one of the first blood banks and invention of the first blood collection bag is known as the pioneer in the transfusion and storage of blood coming to the properties of blood bags the blood bag which we use should be fda approved there are 10 main properties of blood bags first is flexibility it should have minimum resistance to filling transfer and complete emptying of blood components second is strength it should be a pliable material for centrifugation and should withstand centrifugal forces up to 5000 g for at least 10 minutes there should have no distortion or leaks after centrifugation it should have sufficient tensile strength withstand during shipping and handling ideally vacuum permissible air is 7 to 10 mm third property is transparency visual inspection of contents before and during blood collection during processing during storage and issue of components should be done anticoagulant should be clear and colorless and constituents of anticoagulant should be within limits prescribed by iso 3826 fourth property is temperature resistant it should be suitable for to keep blood products at desirably low temperature and well doubled by conventional technique fifth property non toxic that is material should be biocompatible sixth is hemolytic potential should be within acceptable limits seventh it should be sterile even external sterility of the bag to be assured eighth compatibility material should permit storage of specified components within the desired period without significant alterations ninth is safety no toxic substances and no harm to patients tenth diffusion of gases it should be permeable to carbon dioxide and oxygen shelf life of bag should be minimum 3 years and pre donation sample pouch should be there to reduce bacterial contamination coming to the composition of blood bags the materials which are used are plastics plasticizers and stabilizers in plastics we have pvc that is polyvinyl chloride polyvinyl less brittle pl732 is used for platelet storage for 7 days second is plasticizers there are two types phthalates and non phthalates third is stabilizers such as alkalis fatty acids ethylene oxide components there are many polymers which are available for blood bags preparation but polyvinyl chloride is the most commonly used why only polyvinyl chloride because it has the most of the characteristics of an ideal blood bag that is safety chemical stability and inertness transparency flexibility and durability and compatibility but because of its brittleness it requires the use of plasticizers what are plasticizers they are additives that increases the flexibility and workability of plastics it is inserted between the pvc chains enlarging the distance between the molecules without altering the microcrystalline structure of the polymer thereby increasing the mobility of pvc molecules and acts as an internal lubricant 
coming to types of plasticizers there are two types phthalates and non phthalates in phthalates we have dhp and in non phthalates we have melitates citrates adipates and din ch in melitate we have totem in citrates we have bthc and atbc in adipates we have dhea next about the history of plasticizers in 1860 first plasticizer was introduced in 1930 phthalates were introduced in 1980 dhp declared as carcinogenic in 1998 iarc declared dhp as non carcinogenic in 2001 european union calls alternative to phthalates and now industries are coming up with non phthalate blood bags coming to the generation of plasticizers there are two generation first generation and second generation in first generation pvc plasticized with dhp used for storing rbc and platelets dhp leaches into the blood plasma and has distinct protective effect on rbc membrane which enables storage of rbc concentrates for up to 42 days second generation bags overcome the permeability of problem by using thinner sheets of pvc plasticized with dhp and by using plasticizer totem pl1240 coming to dhp that is diethyl hexyl phthalate it is a dipolar lipophilic molecule non covalently bound to the pvc polymer that leaches from the plastics when in contact with stored blood Fun it is a functional polymer with excellent properties such as inertness flexibility transparency high resistant to chem heat and chemicals coming to role of dhp in rbc storage it has improved survival for rbc during storage shape of rbc changes from viscosite to stomatocyte due to decrease in atp levels which affects the atp dependent systems that maintain lipid asymmetry of the membrane thereby leading to severe decrease in membrane deformity dhp incorporates into the rbc membrane thus preventing the loss of membrane deformity during normal rbc aging deformity is lost due to altered cholesterol is to lipid ratio dhp molecule occupies the vacated space and maintains the membrane flexibility and it also causes decreased hemolysis and less microvesiculation coming to the concept called leaching of dhp in 1970 jeger and rubin introduced the leaching of dhp into stored human blood dhp can leach into organic liquids fatty solutions like blood plasma due to its lipophilic nature inside the body dhp is hydrolyzed to mehp that is mono 2 ethyl hexyl phthalate both are toxic these metabolites are further eliminated by glucuronidation which takes place in the liver dhp is a liver carcinogen in rats and mice but as the mechanism of carcinogenicity is specific for rats and mice it is not relevant in human liver based on animal studies and limited epidemiological studies in humans the conclusion reached is that male neonates and male preterm neonates are susceptible to testicular dysgenesis syndrome if exposed to high levels of dhp the amount of dhp leached also depends on temperature duration of contact and lipid content permissible leachable amount of dhp is 0.25 mg per 100 ml per day next about prevention of plasma enzymatic action soluble enzyme which converts dhp to mehp has a ph optimum of 7.2 and a molecular weight of 50000 to 1 lakh in its partially purified state magnesium and atp stimulate the activity whereas adenine inhibits it cpd a bags that is which has presence of adenine decreases the amount of dhp converted to mehp since the plasma contains a enzyme system and this system is increasingly active at higher temperatures by freezing the plasma it becomes possible to prevent further leaching of dhp conversion to mehp for 6 months hence dhp does not increase in frozen rbc stored for up to 2 years and in plasma frozen for 5 weeks coming to the effect of dhp on platelets phospholipase a2 in platelet membranes is inhibited by dhp this prevents arachidonic acid liberation and endoperoxidase formation 
rendering the platelets unable to respond to physiological stimuli in vitro and in vivo. Insufficient oxygen due to DHB causes activation of EMP pathway which results in increased lactic acid production leading to decrease in pH and further leading to loss of platelet viability. Coming to high risk groups, preterm neonates undergoing multiple medical procedures, neonates undergoing exchange transfusion and on our ECMO, neonates with total parental nutrition, high risk cardiac surgeries, patient on frequent hemodialysis, massive transfusion recipients, multiple transfused ICU patients in combination with ECMO. Coming to the toxic levels of DHP, the tolerable daily intake for DHP was found to be 48 microgram per kilogram per day for adults and 20 microgram per kilogram per day for neonates. US FDA report calculated a TDI of 600 microgram per kilogram per day for intravenous administration. Depending on various age groups, the maximum allowable dose level for IV exposure are for adults 4200 microgram per day, infant 600 microgram per day, neonate boys 210 microgram per day. This is a table which shows the amount of DHP concentration at the time of transfusion for various blood components. As we can see, except for reconstituted blood used for exchange transfusion, all are in the tolerable limits. Hence, for exchange transfusion, fresh blood units should be issued so that leaching of DHP is lesser in that units. Coming to non talates first about tri-2-ethyl hexyl trimalitate, also known as tri-octide trimalitate. Characteristics are high boiling point, low melting temperature, readily soluble in most organic solvents. Advantages are less likely to leach from plastic due to its high molecular content. Metabolites are formed in a less amount that is 6% compared to DHP. It has better gas permeability for both oxygen and carbon dioxide. This potentially will allow the storage of platelet concentrates for up to 7 days. The drawbacks are it is a less efficient as a plasticizer because of its high molecular weight higher plasticizer content should be required. Coming to BTHC that is butyl triene hexane citrate. It was developed originally for the use of RBC containers. It produces non-toxic metabolites such as citrate, hexanin and butyric acid. Compared to DHP, it has high resistance to cold stress, hence allows frozen storage, reduced RBC lysis to a lesser extent, Permit storage of RBCs at 4 degrees Celsius for 35 days. Drawbacks are unpleasant order, high cost, lack of possibility of steam sterilization. Another citrate plasticizer is acetyl triene butyl chloride that is ATBC which is used mainly in USA and shows similar characteristics to that of BTHC. Coming to DHA that is diethyl hexyl adipate. It is less compatible with PVC than DHP, so exudation has to be considered. Exudation is migration of plasticizer towards the surface forming separate drops. It has slightly lower toxicity than DHP. Coming to next, DIN CH, diisonyl ester of cyclohexane decarboxylic acid. It has a very similar structure and technical characteristic to those of DHP. It is also said to have almost no migration tendency and lesser toxicity than DHP. DIN CH also has FDA approval. RBC appear to be stable for 42 days. This table shows the plastic plasticizers which are used in different blood bags. Coming to cryo bags. It is designed to process, store cells and tissues from minus 196 degree Celsius to over 200 degree Celsius. Bags comes in various sizes 10 to 200 ml. It is made up of two materials, ethyl vinyl acetate, fluorinated ethylene propylene. Coming to EVA, ethyl vinyl acetate. It is a copolymer of ethylene and vinyl acetate. It has flexibility, softness and durability. Toughness at low temperature, greater resilience than PVC, liquid nitrogen stability, impact and puncture resistant, good optimal clarity, non-toxic and adhesive, low water vapor 
transmission and good gas barrier properties. Coming to Oregon cryo bags, the materials made from a sandwich of polymed capton and FEP fluorinated ethylene propylene films. Inner surface of cryo bag is pure FEP which has unsurpassed biocompatibility. Outer layer is polymed which is gas impermeable making the bag recommended for direct immersion in liquid nitrogen. It is inert that is the inner layer of FEP contains no plasticizers or chemical residuals so there is nothing to leach out into the stored cells. This is a paper which shows the effect of plasticizers and plastic bags on granulocyte function during storage. So, they have come into the conclusion that granulocyte function decreased greatly with DHP PVC bags when compared with totem PVC bags. This is a paper which shows DHP migration from irradiated PVC blood bags for graft vessels host disease prevention. They have concluded that there is decrease in DHP leachability when there is increased dose of gamma ray irradiation. These are the questions which have come in the previous year exams. First about the different plasticizers used in blood component preparation in blood bank. Critical consideration in the development of blood bags and platelet storage bags. Effect of plasticizers on red cells and platelets during storage. Thank you for your patience listening. Arsa Transfusion Medicine Fraternity. For this month on 8th May, World Thalassemia Day is being observed. And the theme given by World Health Organization for this year is Together for Thalassemia, Uniting Communities and Prioritizing Patients. These are my references. Stay tuned for next videos. Thank you.